Okay, so surds, um, not a rude word or a word you'd use to describe your little brother. Um, a surd is essentially a square root which um, has no integer value. So if I have this, that is not a surd because you know the square root of 4 equals 2. Whereas this, square root of 5, there's no integer value um, which is equivalent to this here, the square root of 5. So that is a surd. Um, so a couple of basic rules that you need to know about surds. I'm just generally going through the structure of my video. Uh, we're going to be looking at the two basic rules. Um, part one of my video. Part two of my video is going to be looking at um, kind of extensions of rule number two. But part three is particularly tricky. That, that's generally going to be the case with my videos. Um, the latest part of the video uh, we're going to be looking at the, the, the trickier types of question. Um, and really, this is the type of question that you might um, expect to pop up in the final AS level exam. Okay, so rule number one. If I have this, okay, the square root of a fraction, I can split up this fraction such that I now have the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. What this looks like in practice, if I have the square root of 100 over 36, Notice both of those are square numbers. That's the same as the square root of 100 over the square root of 36. Okay, and you can work out each of those there. 10 over 6, the square root of 100 is 10, square root of 36 is 6, and then you can cancel that down further. Okay, another example. Shouldn't be too taxing this, and it is very similar to, um, or this is a technique we looked at um, during our, our laws of indices work. Okay, so if I have the square root of 65 over 25, I can split this up in such that I have the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator, and I can work out each of those separately. Okay, so that is our first rule there. Um, since you're just breaking up this fractional um, this fraction underneath the square root sign such that we're just looking at the numerator and the denominator separately. So the second um, rule that we're going to look at concerns breaking down big thirds. Um, that's not a job for a plumber. This looks something like this, okay? So if I have the square root of a number multiplied by the square root of another number, um, it's the same as the square root of the product of those two numbers. So in practice, what does this look like? Square root of 6 times by the square root of 7. Well, it's the same as the square root of the product of those two numbers, i.e. 6 sevens, which gives me 42. Uh, another example, square root of 5 times by the square root of 6. You can see 5 sixes gives me 30. That's the same as the square root of 30. Right, no real dramas there. Um, what does this look like in practice? What type of questions might you be asked in your final exam? Well, um, one of the questions you might be asked, it might involve thirds in one form or, or another, but the, the question, it might ask you to, 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 to leave your answer in a simplified form or in the form A root B. So just a note about this, um, this A here is not a small number, so it's not, uh, we're not, it's not this, okay, so we're not looking at um, here, um, if to say my a was 2, it wouldn't look like this. We're not looking at the square root or cube root. Okay, this is a, a big A. In other words, a lots of b. Okay, so a multiplied by root b. Uh, right, so let's look at three examples. Square root of 75, square root of 200 and the square root of 72. And now straight away you think, oh, these, these numbers are quite big. I don't like big numbers, I'm gonna break them down. Um, in order to do this, well, we're going to use the rule we looked at previously. So the square root of 75 is the same as the product of these two square roots. I'm just going to omit the multiplication sign there. Don't really need it, okay? So we know from our previous rule that the square root of 75 is the same as the square root of something multiplied by the square root of something. and Two things underneath our respective square root signs there, they need to multiply together to give me 75. Okay, in order to get our final answer in the form a root b, one of these numbers needs to be a square number. So look at this number 75 here, thinking what square numbers goes into 75? Might take you a little while to figure it out, but 25 square numbers, five squared, 
does indeed go into 75. How many 25s are 75? Three. Okay, and the reason we do this is because we want to write it in this form. You look at this number here, root 25 is the same as five. Okay, final answer, five root three. So in this case, my A is five, my B is three. So five lots of root three. Similarly here, again, the same process. What two numbers multiplied together gives me 200. Remember, one of these numbers needs to be a square number. So which square numbers go into 200? Well, 100, okay. 100 multiplied by 2 gives me 200 there. Okay, 10 root 2. Similarly here, um, root 72, which square numbers go into 72? I'll take a little bit of time again, but 36 goes into root 72, or 76, 36 goes into 72 two times. Okay, what's this the same as? Six lots of root 2. Okay, so you simplify that root 36 there into six okay um just a slight extension of this you might be given um <clears throat> you might be given let's start a new page you might be given um fractions involving thirds and you might be asked to simplify them okay so here the question would just be simplify excuse my handwriting um simplify mathematician not an english teacher um, root 18 over 3. Okay, again, same process. You would be thinking, looking at this number underneath the square root sign, okay, it's not the biggest number, but um, anytime, anytime the question says simplify, or and it doesn't say can rationalize a nominator, if it says simplify, first thing you want to be thinking about is breaking down any um, numbers underneath the square root sign. So the same process, which square numbers go into 18? Uh, well, 9 does. Okay. So it's root 18 is the same as root 9, root 2. Um, so the bottom of the fraction stays the same. Okay, 3 root 2. Just changing that root 9 into uh, 3 there. Okay, and notice these cancel. So in this case, my final answer would be root 2 over 1 or just root 2. Okay, one more example. Root 72 over 3. Okay, again, the same process. What square numbers go into 72? Well, a couple of things here. 36 does. And so does, um, so does 9. Okay, so a little bit of a trial and error with this one, I guess. Because if you chose, um, we'll, we'll take a look at what happens when you use the, the when you use root 36 instead. Um, but here, working on the top, Root 9 is the same as 3 here. Okay, what am I left with? Well, these two cancel. So I'm left with root 8. Okay, but this actually, you can actually cancel this one down even yet further still. That's the same as root 4, root 2. Or 2, root 2. Okay, just for completeness, let's have a look at what happens when... Um, when I choose a different factor. Okay, so again, looking at this root 72, so instead of root nine, root eight, I'm gonna split this down into root 36, root two. And straight away, you should be able to see, well, actually this is going to get us to our final answer a lot quicker in that, okay, so I've got six root two over three. This cancels with this, I've got two up here, Two up here, one up here, one down there. So all what am I left with? Just two root two, which is the same as that answer there. So um, to summarize, when you're dealing with big thirds, so big numbers underneath the square root sign, you want to be thinking, how can I break this down? I want to choose one number, square number, um, and then see how many lots of that square numbers goes into our big numbers. So in this case, looking at root 72, you can either choose root nine or root 36 both of these are factors of 72 and then working through the question like that and just remember here notice the biggest the square number you you, you pull out so here i chose root 36 rather than root 9 the quicker i get to my final answer because there's essentially there's less cancelling involved you don't have this final step going from here to here all i do is um change my my square root here to my whole number and then simplify through like
Okay, so um, we're going to look at the harder type of question that you might be asked, uh, which involves adding together bigger thirds. And more often than not, the question will specify, leave your answer in this form. If it doesn't say leave your answer in this form, then it's fairly safe to assume that the answer can be written in this form, or it might even come out as a nice, as a nice whole number, although that's quite, that's quite rare. Um, so just a quick aside, we said that, just a quick point of notation really, we said that the square root of 75 is the same as the square root of 25 square root of 3, um, or 5 root 3. Remember that means 5 lots of root 3. So if I have this, 3 root 75, and now we have 3 lots of root 75, and um, this will simplify to 3 lots of this, i.e. 15 root 3. So just to, to illustrate that point, well, 3 root 75 is the same as 3 lots of root 25 root 3, which is, remember this, is just equivalent to this. So that 3 just stays where it is. Um, now, looking at this, root 25 root 3 is the same as 5 lots of root 3. Okay, so I have 3 lots of 5 lots of root 3, which is the same as... Um, 15 root 3, so sorry, no, it comes out as 3 lots of this, which is 15 root 3. Um, similarly here, um, if I have, let's look at another example, root 200 say, we said that this comes out as root 100 root 2, um, which is the same as 10 root 2. So similarly, if I had, um, I don't know, 4 root 200, Okay, that would simplify to four lots of this, i.e. 40 root 2. So just to illustrate that point, 4 times by 10 root 2 which equals 40 root 2. Okay, so important point here, just remember that this number in front of our square root sign just means, in this case, 10 lots of root 2 or 10 times by root 2. <clears throat> So, coming on to the harder type of question now, going to be adding together these big thirds. So, if I have, say, root 200 plus root 72, a first port of call, again, we want to be trying to split this up into um, smaller thirds. So, root 200, we know that's the same as root 100 root 2, it's always your first port of call. Anytime you see a big number underneath the square root sign, you want to be breaking this down into smaller thirds. Um, 10 root 2 there, plus 6 root 2. Now this bit here, how many lots of root 2 do I have all together? I've got 10 root 2 here, plus 6 root 2, so that's 16 root 2 all together. Um, <clears throat> so just a quick point here, um, sometimes you might not pick out the right um, factors. So say I did this instead. Um, so 16 root 2 is our final answer here. That's what we want to aim towards. But say now instead of um, root 36 root 2, I oh, can stay there. I'll get rid of this one. Um, <clears throat> I, I call this, I don't know, root 9 root 8. So again, I've picked out a square number, which is what I need to do in order to simplify this and rewrite this in the form A root B, but it's not the biggest square number I picked out here. So notice 36 root 2, sorry, root 36 root 2 is what we had previously, and we now have root 9 root 8. It's not wrong. It's just, like I said, I haven't picked out the biggest square number here. So what happens is that I get this, and I can't add these two together. Um, if you get in this situation, all it means is that you have some further simplific simplification to do. So root 8, you know, splits down into root 4, root 2. Okay, it's the same as 10 root 2 plus. Okay, you notice this turns into a 2, so I've got 3 times by 2 times by root 2. How many lots of root 2 do I have all together in this term here? Well, I've got um, 6 root 2 which does indeed give me 16 root 2 altogether. If I add the 10 lots of root 2 there, add it to my 6 lots of root 2 there, I do indeed get 16 root 2. All right, let's look at one 
more example like this. So it's going to be quite a tricky one. Let's just bubble it. Um, <clears throat> so route 200, not sure why I like route 200 so much. Six route 72 minus four route 18. So <clears throat> again, splitting up these big surds to begin with. Okay, so root 200, what goes into, which square numbers go into 200? Well, it's 100, um, it's 100, lots of two gives me 200 there. What square numbers go into 72? Well, we just did this previously, root 36 and root two. Okay, and then looking at this last surd, which square numbers go into um, 18? It's going to be root nine, so which means the other square root has got to be root two there. Okay, simplifying these square numbers. Okay, and then I have six times by six root two. Um, and then four times by what's square root of nine? It's three. Okay, so notice this line here. I only have one type of square root involved. I only have a square root of two. This is this is how you know you've done it correctly. So again, you might not have picked out the biggest square numbers here. You might have used the wrong factors, but you need this line here um, to only involve one type of square root. So you don't want, I don't know, square root of two and the square root of three. Just want one type of square root. In this case, it's square root of two. Okay, and then just working through these, got six times by six root two. How many lots of root two is that all together? I'm just going to multiply these together to give me 36 root two. And similarly here, four lots of three root two. How many lots of root two is that all together? Just multiply those two together. 12 lots of root two. So all together, we've got 10 root two plus 36 root two minus 12 lots of root two. How many lots of root two is that all together? That gives me 46 minus 12 for 34 root 2. And that would be my final answer. And just notice that is in the form A root B, which is, generally speaking, what we should be aiming for. Okay, so that is a harder type of um, third question, done and dusted. <laughs>Thanks very much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more tutoring videos. Remember that full notes and other resources are available on my tutoring website at idktuition.com. And if you'd like me to cover anything in particular, please leave me a message in the comments below or on Twitter at TomDavies32.